<laughs> hey guys, probably a little bit of a delay. Maybe you can see me, maybe you cannot. If the audio and video are good, let me know. Thumbs up, thumbs down. If the audio and video are good, let me know. You may be able to hear myself talking right there. I forgot to mute the volume. So the laptop was telling me. I was listening to myself. All right. We're going to answer some random questions and hang out. And then we'll, uh, once there's a few more people around, we'll go into some details about the moving sale, the moving situation, all that good stuff. You may hear a small hissing noise in the background. I was, I guess it's, it's backwards on the camera, right? Over there, over there is a laser. Uh, the air compressor is bleeding off air. I was using the laser cutter to cut a bunch of stuff. If the audio is good, no, just keep giving me updates whether it's good or bad. This is actually a different cell phone that I normally use when I go live, so always things to figure out. Jack, what's up? Josh, how are you? Hey, Terry. How am I? I'm well. It's been a busy day as normal, but things are well. Good. Volume's good. Hey, my wife does all the packaging. Uh, there are several people here already, so I'll give you some updates. Uh, see, look, Eric, you put your name in there, right? With the, all the random YouTube names, it's hard to uh, it's hard, it's hard to remember everyone's name sometimes. Uh, burner phone? Nope, wouldn't burn it. It's kind of expensive. We don't want to break it. Uh, but... Uh, easily trackable for sure uh the last two days the shipping department i call it department the office has been shut down right no production uh no shipping we had listed the house for sale sunday night monday tuesday we had a bunch of viewings which is over with we accepted an offer there's an offer on the house so all that stuff is done everything is going smoothly but we are a bit behind on shipping orders. Okay, we weren't, we couldn't produce or ship or package for two days, uh, which may not seem like a significant amount of time, but you can get pretty far behind in two days. Okay, and that's because of all the orders. So thank you for placing the orders like normal. We will get all of that stuff worked out tomorrow morning. The shipping department and production goes back to normal. Everything will roll steady for the next. 27 days before we have to get all the crap out of here and then shut down production. It will take probably two or three days to have it officially moved. So we'll answer some questions. We'll talk about some more of that stuff in a little bit. Uh, the Hobie Links. I love the Hobie Links. I think it is amazing. Uh, mostly because it is so light, quick, easy to use. I have a very minimalist approach to kayak fishing in general. Um, that links allows me to use that minimalist approach, go out, fish for a few hours, kill some time, and then come back home and go to work and reply to emails. And yes, like the shipping department, I am behind on emails for sure. I've been trying, but I got to sit down tomorrow when everything's back to rolling like normal. But the links is awesome. I love it. I look forward to spending a bunch of time in it this winter, and I look forward to doing some freshwater fishing. I've done a little bit already, but I look forward to doing some different things that ideally you guys will enjoy watching. Thank your wife for the quick delivery. Uh, I will tell her, Joe. Every time you guys tell me, I let her know because she doesn't see the interaction here or the emails the majority of the time. So I always tell her when you guys say thanks. Got to keep her in good spirits at all. She does do all the shipping, right? And that stuff is kind of tedious. Uh, let's see here. Good. I have a big order waiting. Well, that's good news, Eric. No, let's get the. If you have questions or need to let me know. Uh, what new products can we look forward to? Well, there's always something, right? Uh, whether it's for the old towns or the Hobies. There's a few things in work, but we're not going to talk about it because last time I talked about something, 
I got a whole bunch of emails about when it was going to be available and I'm not ready to do that again. All right. So we're going to keep all that stuff under wraps until we are moved for today. We did put some different things on sale. Okay. Uh, I just got done running the laser. Uh, I got a bunch more laser to do here in the next few days. But come Saturday, the laser is sold. Now it's not a bad thing. I wanted a larger, I wanted a larger version. It's a great machine, right? It's 24 by 40 inches. It has done a whole lot of stuff. It's awesome. However, we'll have more room at the new house, and I wanted the ability to have a bigger one. Moving those things and storing it and then moving it again. I didn't want anything bad to happen to it. So I put it up for sale today. And within an hour and a half, someone bought it, okay? Uh, so it is gone, and it will be replaced down the road. Now, in the meantime, hook pads, right? might be hard to see because the light is over there. Lighting's probably not perfect. These things are awesome. They work 12 bucks. We put them on sale for 6 bucks a while back. We have about 30 of each color available, okay? These are the brown ones, and I was saving these to talk about uh, another time, but I wanted to use a laser, cut all the material, and get them on the website so these hook pads they're six bucks they're on there right now they'll be on there till they're gone once they're gone they will not be restocked until we are moved into the new place settled and uh really we have cut enough laser stuff as we have cut a, cut enough of these foam things that go on the back of the rod holder tube it actually goes on the back of this thing uh, we cut a bunch of those, so we have enough of those to get us by for probably two or three months. Uh, the laser will get replaced. We'll go back to producing the sea deck down the road. The kayak ropes, those things went off, or those things went over very, very well. Uh, they are back on the sales section for $11. I still don't have one right here to show you guys. Uh, they're five foot long. We talked about it in the video. There's some details there. Uh, no metal hardware or anything like that. So they don't make any noise in the kayak. Drive inserts, right? This is the stuff about the sale. Uh, let's see. Here. Hold on. Hold on here. That's not fully rigged yet. But, okay, we sell a ton. We sell a ton of drive inserts, right? This one doesn't have uh, the pad eye on it yet, but you guys get the point. Uh, it is has weather stripping on it. Now, typically we sell those things for 70 bucks. We sell a ton of them every day, week, month, whatever. There's a bunch of material. I'm not very good at this point in thing. That black stuff right there, bunch of material right there. I do not want to pick that stuff up, put it in storage, and then move it to the new house. I can have more delivered. I already talked to those guys. That's not a big deal. So these things are typically 70 bucks. They're on the website for 50 bucks right now. We have enough material to produce about 128 of them. Uh, typically, we sell far more than that each month. Uh, we sell a bunch of these things, okay? But we're gonna put them on sale for 50 bucks just to blow to that material. Once that material is gone and moved, the price is gonna go back up, okay? Um, it might not go to 70, though. I think about putting it at 70. Now that we're able to source the material in such large numbers and the workflow system is better, we can produce them for 60 bucks in the future. But now they're on sale for 50 bucks they're probably never going to go that low again, okay? If anything, material's going to go up a little bit down the road. You guys already know we live in a crazy world. Prices are kind of getting out of control. Uh, we're trying to – we're going to beat that price stuff going crazy, okay? Once we get moved and settled, a lot of the prices should improve on stuff uh, because we'll be able to produce it in bigger quantities, order more material, store more material. That stuff will go over well, okay? Uh Propellers. The Old Town props are back in stock. Uh, the PDL version had the power version. The power version is six bucks. The PDL version is seven bucks. There's a hundred of them. I just updated the inventory. The box just came in earlier today. Also, shear pins. There's like 400 shear pins right here. They'll get packaged in five packs. They're on the website ready to order as well. Uh, that's it. I guess uh, the rod tubes are still there. There's a bunch of stuff on there. The anchor sticks are still up there on sale. Um, the sales have kind of been sporadic. I don't really have a time frame for what's going up. I didn't know how quickly the house would be listed and then go on. You know, I didn't know how quick it would get listed 
and then instantly be sold or not, right? So uh, material-wise, we're kind of just trying to make room, okay? Um, Eric, I apologize for you ordering it last week or whenever. Just shoot me an email, and I'll, I'll make sure you're taken care of, okay? Um, Will, I appreciate the congrats on the uh, contract. I appreciate it. Uh, I've never sold a house before. Obviously, I've bought a house before. However, selling a house to buy a different house is stressful, okay? Stressful. Uh, well, we rambled enough about that and these random products. If you have questions, just email me. Let me know. Now, if you have questions about fishing or anything else, just uh, drop a comment right here. Make sure you touch, hit, click, smash the like button because that's what YouTube wants. I figured that we would make this video now. That way, you guys, whoever watches the live video first will get first dibs on the orders, and then you guys will have priority. Um, and that's really the goal. We're going to probably delete this video. Uh, sometimes you ramble a bit in these things. It's kind of weird sitting here talking to the phone while reading comments down there. Uh, so you guys will get first dibs on all of the sales and orders that we talked about tonight. Um, no one knows these exist other than you guys. Uh, someone, before I made, I posted these things for sale. I came out here to turn the live video on and someone placed the order buying a bunch of that stuff in the insert instantly. So I know you guys have been checking the sale page. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Pablo, thanks for your help with my stuff. Yeah, it's nice talking to you, buddy. Uh, Nakwa is a great company, man. The, we wouldn't carry it if I didn't truly believe in it or the company. That's where we are, okay? That's like... Uh, I said it from the beginning, even with the charter business, charter business was built using items that I had faith in, I trusted, that served me well. And most of the time, you're using stuff that a company that is a good company, right? So Nakwa, those batteries have always been good. Uh, Pablo had a connector issue where you know, we received a product, we sent the product to him. He got it obviously unopened and it had a problem with uh, the threads on one of the wires. I emailed Nakwa, sent him information, they called him, emailed him. And uh, took care of the problem. So that's always good to see. Can you explain what the seat spaces on what the seat spaces on Old Town does? Okay, so the seat space, we have a whole video on that, okay? Uh, if you go to the YouTube page and go to search, you'll be able to watch the video. Now, I'll give you a rundown. I don't have one in my hand. Maybe I do. Maybe I do. Uh, I have one. It's not fully rigged, and I don't have the adapter that goes with it. There's one right here somewhere. I can go find it. Hold on. All right. <clears throat> so we had a lot of requests for seat spacers. Now, we had requests for seat spacers for months. And I wouldn't do it because I felt like it needed to encompass more than just one thing. Uh, which is a super challenge, right? So, and in the video I talk about everyone's kayaks not being the same width, so really you need to watch that video so you can handle on approach. But this thing here goes here, mounts right there where that black one is, and it allows you to adjust this piece up here, this little set screw, it's probably hard to see, and it'll stop the seat from shifting left and right. Uh, some people have problems with this. Some people don't. Um, everyone's needs are going to vary. Now, there are people who remove their seats for transport and stuff like that. If you install this and tighten the set screw, when you pull the seat out, this piece can't fall off. Typically, there is a rope that connects these two pieces, but if you pick it up, one end will fall off, and it's kind of a uh, it's kind of question mark uh they, they have a few different services right watch that video it's hard to go into details here about it um but if you email me i'll answer any questions you have or you just give me a call whatever is easiest uh thanks tom appreciate it
same process. Yeah, your brother lives in Pensacola. Pensacola's not a bad place to live, okay? We like it in this area. Uh, Navarre itself is just getting real, real busy for us. So for the family, uh, we wanted a little bit more room. So it's getting real busy down here on the coast, okay? Getting real crazy. It's hard to drive anywhere. I ordered the wrong transducer, sent them an email, received the right one. That's awesome. The uh, Look, customer service is key, okay? That's what it comes down to. Uh, Nick, a part of my order, a new rudder, I watched the video and feel confident I'll change it out. Is there, if there's an issue, can I email you? I mean, you can always email me. Look, you know, I have, people don't mess up the rudder install nearly as much as people think it would happen, okay? It's very simple if you watch the steps and use uh, quality wire, right? However, I have had people mess up and then we just get on like FaceTime, or Facebook video or whatever, and then I will help you resolve the issue. Mistakes happen. Sometimes people's kites are just broken. So we do a, we'll call it, uh, you know, FaceTime consulting to fix things randomly, okay? Uh, if you have an issue, just email me. Uh, just got online. Do you have a move date yet? We do not have a final date. You know, we have a suggested it'll be middle of December. Um, <clears throat> but we don't have an exactly final thing set in stone, okay? Business operations, remember we have you know, Jamie and Dan, they do wonderful jobs around here. I've told you guys in the past, Jamie and Dan sit right here different times of the day. Uh, they produce the ropes, they prep all of these parts, all, they tap and dye all of the uh, floating nuts. Every part that they, they have handed just about every part, at least 95% of them, right? Uh, Dan runs the CNC machine over there. So we'll be able to continue production like normal pretty much up to the day before moving, okay? And that is that was the goal. We'll be able to get all the house stuff out. We actually, we rented a storage facility so we could store. We don't have to, we don't want to put everything in U-Haul, keep it in the U-Haul or do pods, do anything crazy. Uh, so we rented a you know, temporary storage facility so we could store our stuff there. That way the moving process wouldn't interfere with the business, which is obviously the main goal. Obviously this is a huge priority to us. Uh, but yeah, everything will go smoothly. So don't worry about burdening the business. I will keep you guys updated. Uh, and if anything, we're going to miss a one to three day window on production and shipping. That's, that's the goal. Ideally, um, it's not a very, it's not a huge operation, right? There's not that many hands. It's my wife, myself, Jamie, and Dan. That's it. That is that is the operation, okay? Uh, Jamie runs a lot of the fishing trips. Jamie is the future of the charter business, okay? And I'm going to actually film a video talking about these parts of the sale and just post it on the YouTube page. But Jamie was out this week. And I was going to post some photos in there. Uh, they caught some nice redfish this week. They had to work for them. Anytime that goes from hot to cold, you you have to work for the fish sometimes. So they had their hands full. They spent some extra hours out there. But they, they caught some nice fish, okay? And that's always the goal. Um, don't worry about burdening the business. It'll be okay. So that's it. What other questions do we have? I don't want to ramble about the moving and stuff. I wanted to answer some questions, too. We'll just have a, an evening of chatting about random things. Just curious. I grabbed the handles from you. Three screws came out smooth. The one's like they're Loctite. That's not common. What that means is the two inside screws are into inserts, okay? Um, they're in the inserts, outside screws just go into the kayaks. More than likely, someone cross-threaded that screw. Uh, just shoot me an email and some photos. It's hard to discuss it on here. We'll see if we can uh, remedy your situation, okay? Um, just, yeah, we'll work it all out, though. A few folks, hey, look, it is, as long as the business stuff is organized, uh, Dan and Jamie crush it. I already told you guys in the past, Erica, she's the boss. She's the MVP. I just caused the problems. Uh, someone's got to do it, right? Cause the problems, stir the pot, and then uh, she buffs everything out. 
kind of questions we got? Kayak questions, fishing questions. Who fished this weekend? Anybody fish this weekend? And better yet, what are you, about 20 people in here? Where are you guys watching from? Uh, I should have had Jamie come over here so he could sit right here. He's probably watching, so he could sit right here and be a man of few words. Count on him to answer questions and tell you about his fishing trips. Um, if you have any questions about the sale or anything, let me know, okay? During the summer, my PDL drive hit a rock and scraped some plastic off the bottom. Can I use some sandpaper to clean it up? Yeah, so look, that uh, I don't have one here. I'll show you. That is just a skeg. All it is is a piece of plastic. You can actually just call town and buy a new one if you needed to, uh, or you just sand it up. It's You can't hurt it, okay? Don't worry about that. Uh, don't worry about it a bit. So your kayak's fine. Jamie just said he could be here in seven minutes. He could be. I knew he was watching. The uh, We're going to have him come in here. We'll have him run the live videos. Told you guys in the past that Jamie is the future of the charter business. Those guys have been doing – he, he does a good job. He has a blast with the clients, right? Believe it or not, he does talk, okay? I just tease him about being a man of few words when the camera's on. Uh, they've been getting it done, not having any issues. So if you guys are coming down, I'll be around to doing a few trips here and there. But the business – this part of the business really takes a huge amount of time. Obviously, I ran the charters for a very, very long time. I enjoy it. Um, it's just not – feasible it's not possible anymore for you know to be everywhere at once and uh jamie has earned the ability to run those trips inshore and offshore uh, and if he messes up you just no, I'm just kidding. uh you got some more questions here surf fished in jacksonville area black drum were on the menu there you go you can keep the big ones the small ones the little ones are delicious i've never kept a big one typically around here the large ones are full of worms so we just let them go so they can make more babies too cold for bass fishing. Nebraska. So do you ice fish, Tom? We don't get much ice around here, obviously. San Antonio. Wayne, hi. Hey, buddy. How are you? Hope you're doing well. A couple rock fish out of Ocean City, Maryland. You know, I've always wanted to get up that direction and do some tog fishing. You know, they're kind of like Sheep said. Uh, I've always wanted to just go out and catch one. Uh, one day. Not this day. Washington. Imagine just getting cold up there. I've been up there. I've been to Washington. Uh, water's about 45 degrees. Danny's near San Antonio as well. On the majority of the products, we use a material called Pet G. There's a lot of options, okay? Uh, I have found it to work well for us. Um, and there's just so many different companies that make that stuff. It's hard. You got to just pick one and keep going till you find the right one. Uh, too dangerous for me. Yeah, I understand. Uh, getting on the ice, Tom, that's kind of weird. Uh, 18 inches, those are good. Uh, black drum. Going to catch some tog tomorrow morning. That's awesome. Yeah. One day I'll go do that. Uh, I think uh, Jamie fished today. The winds were brutal. They were not as forecasted. Uh, he, it was just him and his brother just doing some fishing, scouting, hanging out. Um, after after that, or after tomorrow, Jamie and I will get out and we'll do some fishing, go look around, uh, make some on the water videos. I know the last uh, week or so, two weeks, we we have had no time to uh, do anything like that. Personally, Jamie's been fishing. I just haven't had time to. Uh, Go out and record any kind of video. Do you have a new product for Lynx? It is inside. It is a rod holder. Uh, it is super simple. It goes on the seat clip. I love it. Uh, when fishing from the Lynx inshore, I won't personally use the fish finder. I had the fish finder on there for going offshore for water depth, stuff like that. Uh, but having a rod right next to the seat is going to be awesome. And it worked out really well. And it's reversible. So, that is a new product that we release here in the next few days. It's going to go over well. Any advice on how to protect the sides of the yak while fishing for sheep's edge on bridge pilings? I don't want to mess up the new sportsman PDL. Well, if, I mean, obviously you've been sheep's head fishing before. It is very hard not to mess up the side of a kayak 
or the front of the kayak when you run into the piling. It's just those barnacles destroy that stuff. It just make it so, uh, we'll just say scratched up, right? Um, I've seen some interesting thoughts on it. I've seen guys take pool noodles and kind of like glue them to their kayak. And then you got to get the glue off, which is weird. I will tell you that one of my plans for that laser right there was to make pieces, just strips that could go on the side of the kayak for that very reason. I consider making a kill guard out of this sea deck as well. Obviously, that stuff's going to have to wait about 30 days because once we get into the new house, get settled, CNC machine will be a quick and easy setup. The new laser will be coming out sometime after that, okay? And so what it would be is... I usually don't throw all these scraps away, but since we are moving... I missed. I missed the garbage can. Uh, these scraps were put in the garbage. So... What I was saying was cut a, you know, these guys, and it would be a little bit bigger than that, probably about three to four inches tall, and then cut sections of that. That way you could just pull the back of this stuff off and stick it on your kayak. That way you could run into the oyster bars, bounce off it, and you could beat this up to death. It's just cushion, right? Six millimeter foam, and then you could just replace it if needed and the seed deck comes off pretty easy and it's better than just using a random glue so uh this is my plan for the future of protecting the kayak from barnacles okay well obviously we have a number of different parts we have our hands in a bunch of different things and like tom said there's not very many employees right we keep it small um take care of jamie and dan right they're, they're pretty much family realistically okay and they, that makes our lives easier. It also does hinder us from being able to just do all kinds of things at once. Uh, so it's kind of a slower approach, okay? Once we get settled in the new house, we will have more room. The garage is bigger, have a whole area dedicated to the printer, stuff like that. And it will allow us to change our approach a bit, produce more products, produce them faster. And that's why we'll be able to change the prices on a lot of stuff in the future which I am excited about because I'd rather give you guys the best price possible. Uh, just need some more room and some more efficiency. What else we got here? That's how I protect that kayak, though, okay? We'll, we'll do it in the future. For now, you can try to pull noodle route. What's your recommendation for a crate system? I'm six foot five, so I like the angle look at the Yak Gadget Pro crate system, but not a fan of the price. Well, I hate crates. That's what I got for you. <laughs> uh, I am not a fan of a crate. I have said that for years. Uh, unless you have like a milk crate with a few rod holders on it, you can just take it in and out of each kayak. I'm not against that, right? Uh, but crates, in my opinion, are a place that things you don't go, don't use, go to die. So you can just be like, well, hey, let me just toss this in a crate. Well, Toss this in a broken prop, right? You break it. Let me just toss that in the crate, you know? I've had a crate. I've had a lot of random things in there, okay? Great place for empty Gatorade bottles. I just I just can't do it, okay? So price and who makes it, not really a major thing to this guy. Um, I don't have a good answer for you, Adam. That's just it. That's my opinion. Unfiltered opinion. I hate crates. That's what I got. That's all I got. Uh, I still can't get the seat bar out of the back. Cut the middle strap, like you said. You're trying to pull it, off, but it's split. So you cut the middle strap, and the thing's still touching your butt. Hey, Dan, you have seat risers, right? I, I know, I know you're a huge supporter of the business, and I appreciate that. Uh, do you have the seat risers? Does it help? I have a humming, have a hummingbird helix five fish finder, first try ever. Would you know how to use fish finder? I can't read today. Wow. First fish finder ever. Would you, how to use a fish finder effectively or a YouTube dummy proof video on it? Oh, okay. I got you. I can't read. Maybe you can't type sometimes. That finger's right. Uh, man, I am not a fan of hummingbird. Dang, I'm just being mean to all kinds of stuff today. Crates, fish finders. Uh, I bought a Helix 7. 
I installed it on a 2017 Old Town Predator PDO. That's when it first came out, right? Um, I pre-ordered that bad boy the day it was released at ICAST, and I didn't see it for six months. No one else around here had one, and everybody's like, you're going to hate that Predator kayak. It sucks. I'm like, you hadn't even sat in it. But I put that Helix on there, and the only thing I hated about that kayak was that Helix 7. Um, not a big fan of it. It's overly complex. You need to change a bunch of things. Obviously, all of Johnson Outdoors, Old Town, Hummingbird, they're all partner owned by, owned by Johnson Outdoors, all sister companies. Uh I don't like it. You got to switch buttons by going to the menu. You got to keep pushing the menu button or view button to change pages. You can go in. You can turn some pages off. I prefer the Garmin. I know that Hummingbird runs some fantastic sales. You can still use it. There's a bunch of videos out there. It's just a super complicated system for no reason. And the user interface is terrible. Like, someone should call Hummingbird and be like, bro, why is this user interface so crazy? Uh, but if you have questions about it, Eric, I will uh, make sure you are taken care of. I like how you changed your username. How how'd you do that? It was EH. Now it says Eric. How did you do that? Uh, Danny, the seat risers will probably help you because it's going to take the seat from – this is pretty drastic. All right, it's going to take the seat from this angle – and raise the rear a little bit, uh, which would, you know, it makes you sit up more instead of sitting like this, which will put your butt on the seat more than you sitting at a, like a slouched angle. Um, my recommendation would be take a two by four, right? Take a two by four. Um, probably got a scrap one out in the garage. Put them underneath each side and just have a seat in the kayak in the driveway. Uh, you could cut those blocks over and over again and make them different heights. That way you could see if the angle change helps your back, okay? Uh, I recommend it to a lot of people. Uh, everybody sits in the kayak differently. I will tell you that the recline, you know, you're kind of sitting at this angle like this. You're, you're kind of leaning backwards and your butt's going to be touching that bar. Uh, once you do this, you're, you're going to have that curve in the small of your back to your butt. And you should be able to avoid that bar. Uh, the other thing is the seat risers, once you come forward like this, and you're, you're like this, when you're leaning backwards, you're, the whole time your arms are kind of like squeezed in, right? But when you sit up, you can hold your rod like normal. Your shoulders are relaxed. It takes a lot of pressure off your neck and stuff too. That is my biggest thing about the seat risers. For me, it takes the pressure off of my shoulders then my neck doesn't hurt at the end of the trip. Remember, I sat in those kayaks. When I ran all the trips, man, I sat there for four to six, eight hours a day, 220 trips plus a year with clients. And then my own time in the kayak. Uh, two by four, test it out. What brand fish finder size? I'm looking at a Lowrance. I like the two-year warranty. Okay, I, warranties are cool. Um, I've used a Lowrance. I've used a bunch of them, and I will come back to the fact that Garmin has the best user interface. They have the best app. They have an app. If you buy something like a Garmin 73 SV, get the Eco Map, whatever, it has Wi-Fi built into it. It has an app on your phone called Active Captain, and I've talked about it in some videos in the past. You can... Plan your course on your phone or save waypoints on your phone, and it instantly transfers to your phone or sorry, fish finder. Then you can set it up that if you are out there fishing, you find a spot and you mark it, it instantly goes and it saves to your phone. It's synced back and forth, right? That way, if you got hop on someone else's boat, you have it. Now, let's go back to the ranch. <clears throat> Lawrence has the most ridiculous shaped transducers they're huge long like the triple shot that transducer is super skinny and long and it is super challenging you're gonna have a hard time mounting on a 120 pdl uh you have to use that universal plate and then you're going to be super easy to hit we did a video on mounting it say this is the ground it's going to be about this far i mean like an eighth of an inch above the bottom of the kayak 
It is not a good look. It's not a good answer. If you get like a Garmin 73 SV, then you get a GT54 transducer now maybe. It's about this big, about yay long. Easy to mount in the scupper hole. Side scan will work left and right. We have made scupper mounts for the Lowrance and the Hummingbirds. Just they're not as easy to mount on the kayak. You know, Old Town will tell you they have a universal... If you go to their website, and it may have changed, I promise you it said a revolutionary universal transducer mount. That's what it said. It's hilarious, okay? Uh, if it doesn't work well for a lot of transducers, you got to think that these, these uh, fish finder companies, they're not building transducers for kayaks. They're building transducers for boats, a much bigger market, and then we kind of get the sloppy seconds of it. It's kind of got to make it work. Um, transducer considered. Transducer options considered. User interface considered. And that awesome app, for me, those three things justify the Garmin all day. And I will tell you that I have zero relationship with Garmin other than they take a lot of my money, and that's okay because it works really, really well. I have had a few different problems with, I guess only one or two over the years. The compressor's bleeding off air. Garmin has fixed that problem with no cost to me multiple times. One time, I had a 7CV, and did you little tiny little pins on the back of it and i made a mistake um middle of charter season and i did not reapply dielectric grease after someone wasn't me flipped a kayak and we have let a client use it that's why we don't supply fish finders on kayaks you got to learn right um it got corroded on the power pin on the back of the fish finder i was like okay it's a little bent i can fix it Terrible idea. Little screwdriver, and I touched that pin that broke off. Well, guess what? Now it's broke. Broke for good. Um, I called Garmin. I told the guy on the phone that I broke it. It was my fault. What can I do to pay to have it repaired, replaced, whatever? And he was like, hey, uh, I see your account. Let me bring this up real quick. I see you have it registered. If you give me your credit or debit card, I will put a hold on your account. I will send you a new one. You send me that one, and we'll just replace it for free. Garmin customer for life, no questions. Uh, a few years prior to that, this is probably 2017, um, I had a transducer that was, it told me that the sound was 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Clearly, it wasn't. Uh, I'm pedaling along and I'm on the phone with the guy. I'm like, no, really, it says 212. He's like, hey, we'll send you a new transducer. They sent me a new transducer, no charge, same thing. Put a hold on the account, new transducer came in. I shipped it back. Boom. Done. Uh, Josh is another example. Um, he was in here somewhere. He purchased a, maybe it was a 94, 93 SV, I think it was. Uh, he had a problem with the SD card slot. Same situation. Uh, reach out to him. Hey, this is my problem. Boom. They replaced it. Done deal. No money out of pocket in reality. Okay. So if the warranty with Lawrence is your thing, Garmin is a fantastic company. I'm honestly, I, other than the fact that Garmin's never going to give a kayaker a pro staff, like, like they're not just going to give out pro staffs to all these kayakers. I have no idea why Garmin is not more readily recognized in the kayak industry than it is. You see a whole bunch of hummingbird, Lawrence, all these people telling you how good it is. And then you have Garmin who is a fantastic company, has that warranty, has all these things, fantastic customer service. They're just not giving away free products to every random dude to tell you that it's good. That's a random rant. We don't need to go down that road. Uh, I would get the Garmin. I would get the Garmin. Uh, shoot, I just had a Garmin 94 SV I decided to sell. I think I paid eight, 900 bucks for it two years ago. I used it on a charter business for two years and I sold it for 450 bucks. No issues wrong with it. I use it every day. I had it mounted on a salty, had it mounted on a big water. 
had a GT51 transducer, which is about half the size of this piece of C deck. Uh, huge. Never had a problem. Did a video on it offshore catching uh, trick fish and snapper in the salty. I talked about how to use fish finder in that video. Uh, that's my that's my my fish finder randomness. Uh, Danny, if you have questions about the seat riser stuff and the two by fours, just give me a call or shoot me an email. Okay, I, I got some thoughts on it, how to make it better. Right, we deal with, I deal with these questions a lot. Right. Sometimes it's harder to answer them in this format. The combination, yeah, the combination of the front and back. Uh, we can talk about that on the phone. Show you how to rig it so you can test out what's comfortable. Hey, Lee, about to order a sports from 106, 120, mostly inland lakes and streams, rivers, but may get into some bays. Lean towards the 106. Other pros and cons I should consider. Um, the 106 is challenging to mount fish finders on in some capacity. A lot of people who email me like, hey, I have this transducer, I wanna put it on this 106, but on the PDL drive, the, the mounting location and the scupper hole are like this far from the pedal system. So that's something to consider. With the 120, you have a little bit more room, that area is elongated to give you that extra two feet. Personally, I think that the, actually, I think Eric just said it. I think that the big water or the predator is a better platform for anything you're going to do. Okay. Uh, but if I had to choose between the 106 and the 120, I would take the 120 any day of the week. And it really comes down to this leap. How tall, okay, I'm just going to ask, be blunt about how tall, how much do you weigh? Okay. that That's a huge deciding factor. If you can answer that. Um, if you are short, okay, this is something that people don't consider and it's a, something that should be talked about. If you are short and you have to slide that seat, let's use our C deck. I talk with my hands, right? If you're short and you slide that seat forward, the front of the kayak is going to point down because you have more weight front of center. Now, if you're tall, you're going to come back. It's going to level it out, tip it backwards. The shorter the kayak the more this is exaggerated based on your weight. So if you come forward in a 106, you're going to drop that front end quicker. Go back or drop the rear quicker. It is smarter to drop the rear. Uh, 510, 215. Yeah, so you're going to hit the sweet spot. You're going to sit a little far forward on the 106, in my opinion, but you're not five foot four, okay? Um, but just consider this. If you are sitting just front of center in the 106, you're going to drop the front end and then you're going to lose some performance, okay? And what I mean is Native, when Native first released their Slayer, this their kayak, it pushed water all the time. It was, just, it was round in the front and not point. Like, if you look at the Predator, it slices through the water. The 106 is going to push more water than sit on top of it, okay? And I would go with the 120 because of that. I would instantly rule out the 106. Because pedaling three miles per hour in the 120 will be a lot easier than the 106. And if you do want to cover any large portion of water or pedal across the small lake and back across the small lake or north and south or whatever, that 120 is going to make a big difference in the long run. Also, shorter kayaks have a tendency not to track well and have a tendency to spin under the wind because they're so short, it's weird. Um, Longer will let you cut through the water better, more surface area, stuff like that. Okay, so I would consider that uh, if you have the ability, I would go with the 120. Uh, the 106 is not going to save you that much weight. If you have a storage issue, then you got to do what you got to do. The 106 is still a fantastic platform. You just need to make adjustments and know what you're getting into. Okay, uh, you're going to be happy with either kayak, right? Um, Obviously, I've had a bunch of kayaks. I have the ability to sit here and be as picky as I want to be, okay? Uh, so I'm just telling you my, my experiences with it. I have a friend that lives right here in Navarre. He has a 106. Uh, he is probably 215, probably 61, though. Uh, he, he likes it, okay? 
Um, I also know that he likes the big water predator more because I've taken him offshore in it multiple times. I've taken his wife, I've taken his son. Uh, but the 106 is easy for him to put in the back of his truck. And he can only use it a few times every year anyway, so he doesn't care. Uh, interesting consideration, just thinking the 106 will stick out on my pickup less. I'll tell you this, okay? If you have a six foot nine bed, is that with the tailgate down? Because the tailgate adds a whole lot of room, okay? Uh, it adds a whole lot of room. Just consider that too. Uh, I have a question. I currently own a Big Water 132, looking to change kites to a K14 360 or an autopilot 136. Which choice would be best in your opinion? Uh, Johnny, where do you live? What do you fish for? So that's a big, those are big questions, okay? Where do you live? How do you launch? Uh, what do you fish for? And I, I'll give you just my thoughts, okay? Uh, all right, Nick, not to get you back on another rant, but the Garmin Fish Finder, what transducer would you recommend? When learning about them, they seem to have quite a few types out there. I would get a 73SB Garmin EcoMap 73SB. It should come with a GT54 these days, I believe, and I would just let it ride. It's a fantastic setup, works wonders, uh, easy to mount transducer on every one of Old Town's kayaks. Uh, works really, really well. I got lost for a second. I have my things where I get lost, okay? Uh, plus 18 inches. I'll tell you this. So... My rule of thumb for the kayak being in the back of a pickup truck to whether or not to use a bed extender. If I'm going to go on a long road trip, it is smart to have a bed extender regardless. But if you're only going on at the max hour trips one direction, bed extender, I would say is not needed if and only if. If this is your kayak, I mean, the sea deck pieces is so handy. I'm going to keep it. Can't throw it away. This is your kayak. If you have more than, say, 60% of that kayak in your truck and you have the pedal system in the front of it, so that way you have a 20-pound pedal system here and all the weight, over 50% of the kayak weight and the 20-pound pedal system is supported in the truck, we'll say from here this way, you're good. I put two straps around those handles so they are being pulled into the truck bed and I would let it ride. Uh, I took, I saw I mount the links in the back of my little Toyota Tacoma now. Uh, it sticks out and the links is tiny. Um, as long as more than 60% of the kayak is supported, I would not sweat it. No bed extender required. Short trips. 106 PDL. Five and a half or eight and a half. Hold on. Let me, uh, I got, a, I got a little chart thing right here. I created. Well, here's a good question for you too. You have a one Oh, you said one Oh six PDL. Well, how do you like your one Oh six PDL? Uh, do you fish small bodies of water? Do you think that a longer kayak would serve you well when you go into big bottles of water? Everyone, everyone's experience is different, right? And I talked about it before. Jamie is going to start talking about his experience in the salty and his experience in the big water because although I definitely influence his decisions and I, and I say mean things to him sometimes, uh, he has his own opinions. He's willing to tell you his own opinions and his experience, like everyone else's, varies differently, okay? So different perspectives are important. Mine, I have a bunch of experience, yes, but and I talk to a bunch of people from all over the country or world about this stuff, but Everyone's need and uses are different, okay? Uh, for the 106 PDL, I just want to verify real quick that I'm not crazy before I tell you an answer. Okay, so you're going to be mounting it on the front tracks. The five and a half inch version is fantastic. Uh, just so you could, well, that's a 108. Hold on a second. Hold on, hold on. I'm messing up here, clicking the wrong buttons. Uh, 
Yeah, if you're mounting on the front of those tracks, you're not going to have any issue, okay? What I would do, though, is I'd take a tape measure, and I would measure from the center of the gear track five and a half inches. And that's five and a half is the center of that hole. And that way you can just verify you won't have any problems. If you're trying to mount it on the rear, depending on where you put your track mount, because you had to install your own track mount, you may need eight and a half. But front five and a half should be perfect. Uh, but I would just measure it just so you can verify. I don't have a 106 laying around or I'll go figure it out for you. Um, Nick, are you staying in Devar with your move? Or are you still doing charters? I plan on making down there a few days and want to go fishing. Okay, so I will be available to do trips from time to time. I will tell you that the number of trips that I run will be much more limited than they have been in the past. Uh, I will, we'll, we're close enough I can come down and fish whenever I want, okay? We are moving a little bit north, just away from the water. Not far, okay? Um, we'll release some more detail about that stuff. I don't want to jinx anything. Maybe it's just going to work out smoothly, okay? Um, I will be in range to come down and have go fishing and do whatever. A lot of times we drive north to fish all winter, so we'll just be driving south to fish in the summertime. Uh, it's not far. It's still very, very doable, okay? Um but going forward, Jamie is going to run the majority of the trips just because of schedule restraints and everything else, okay? And he does a fantastic job. That's why we're trying to get him involved a little bit more in these videos, okay? Uh, Johnny's question originally was about purchasing a Autopilot 136 or a Hobie PA uh, 14. 360. If you don't know what that is, it's a pedal system where you can pedal and turn the direction. It's pretty cool, okay? Um, he has a big water. He lives in Chicago. Rivers, Lake Michigan as well. So I'll assume you do quite a bit of trolling, right? I, my assumption is that you get out there on Lake Michigan, you troll. Uh, we guys catch trout, walleye, stuff like that, which is cool. I mean, I need a bunch of different fish. I grew up on uh, Lake Erie, right? So I have a bit of idea. Uh, if you're using the boat launches, the weight is not relevant as much anyways. Uh, obviously, the trailer makes it easier. Um, I have some mixed feelings about the PA. Okay, so if you want to if if you want to get away from pedaling, the autopilot definitely wins. Um, trolling a huge body of water like that, being able to set a course on the remote and just kick back and worry about the rods instead of pedaling is a huge factor. Um, I recommend, I think my daughter is crying. What did she do? She's supposed to be asleep. All right. Uh, the, uh, the autopilot for me, if I'm going to fish Lake Michigan and I don't want to pedal, you already have a big water. Like you already, it's the big water. The PDL is more efficient pedaling than that, than the Hobie system. Okay. The Hobie, you got to kind of go faster at, we'll say higher RPM. Whereas the PDL, which I know has more torque, it's more resistance, but it's instant response and it goes very well. Um, but if you're just going to troll and you have the ability to buy a quality battery and the money is not too big of an issue, which it probably isn't saying that both those kayaks are pretty darn expensive. Uh, I would probably get the autopilot. And if you watch the video about me being mean to the autopilot, I was pretty much uh, telling you that it wouldn't work here. Remember, everyone's needs are different. Uh, being able to push a few buttons and troll Lake Michigan, down riggers, whatever you're going to do, for me, I'd go that direction uh, without much delay. I would buy it new. Uh, I'd get that warranty on that motor uh, because I know it's people who have broke that AP motor, and Old Town is a fantastic company when it comes to customer service, stuff like that. So they will make sure you are taken care of, okay? Uh if you guys just started watching, if you have questions, let me know. We'll uh, hang out here for a, we'll hang out here for a little more, a little few longer. We'll answer some more questions, okay? Uh, if you didn't know, we are moving. Got a moving sale. Uh, NavarreKayakFishing.com. Should be a link below. Slash store, right? Dot com slash store. Um, hook pads. They're on there. Multiple different color hook pads. These ones are pretty cool. Uh, we won't be making any more of those till we get moved. So once they're gone, they're gone. Uh, PDL props <clears throat> back in stock. Uh, inserts. We put them on sale for 50 bucks. 
Uh, flavored water, not very good, but healthy, right? Probably not healthy. Uh, what kind of questions do we have, though? Any questions? I like to know where you guys are from, too, okay? But maybe that's weird. But it's interesting seeing where people are from. Sometimes there'll be people watching from, you know, random countries on the other side of the world. Uh, so if you have uh, questions, ask them. Tell them where you're from. Other than that, I can ramble. I can rant about random things like fish finders if needed. Uh, one of the things of moving that I'm actually... Go book, guys. One of the things that I'm excited about for moving is we'll have access to more fresh water. Um, and that is, that's kind of, I got some, I got some checklists I want to go target, right? Some things to check off. Um, what about the river for the autopilot? You know, that comes down, it's going to come down to the river, John. If it's a big river and it's not shallow, I wouldn't, it wouldn't really phase me. Um, I will tell you that at a 40 pound thrust motor, if the river has heavy currents, probably going to eat that battery up pretty good. Uh, uh, excuse me. I would consider that. That's a major thing to consider for me. At the same time, that current's bad, though. You don't want to pedal back up it either. Uh, now, if it's shallow, the Hobie system, the kick-up fins, that system is probably a bit better, in my opinion, uh, if it's shallow. I would consider that, okay? Uh, Hobie makes a good kayak. I I started, well, we'll say, we'll use the phrase fishing career, but really I'll just go fishing, right? I started... When I bought my first nice kayak, it was a Hobie PA-12. Uh, so I am very familiar with those fins. Uh, when I got out of the Air Force, I actually spent about a year where all I did was fish. Um, I fished and went to school. And I fished all morning. I did some homework at night. My wife helped me a ton. Uh, and we made it through it. And that's how all of this was possible or started. Um, I I like the Hobie system, but it's not as efficient as the PDL system, which you already know. Uh, for the river, I would not want to pedal up a heavy moving river in the Hobie. Not a chance. Um, would you recommend a wax like you do for a surfboard for the winter or in general? Um, well, Eric, saying that you live in Connecticut and I live in Florida, the definition of winners these days are much different. Um, I'm going to wear shorts all, all winter, okay? Um, and some Crocs. Uh, I wouldn't really worry about wax, but I definitely wouldn't store it outside. If you can't, I know everybody can't store it inside. I would not store it outside if I were you. Um, that's just my personal opinion. Hey man, I have a question. Would you have any direction for putting a DIY rudder on a Sports 106? Hey, um, we have a video that shows you how to replace the rudder. Wait, you have a 106 Sportsman non PDL, just the paddle version. Is that the question? Most people have PDLs. So I thought you wanted to improve it, but if you have a paddle kayak, you need to have the foot controls and stuff like that. Uh, let me know which kite, if you have the paddle version, we can talk about it. Uh, I couldn't switch to a, from the PDL to an AP. No way. Yeah, no way you're paddling that thing. The battery goes out. Yeah. Uh, when I made my video about the autopilot, clearly a whole bunch of people who live in freshwater places that use boat ramps to launch their autopilots watched it and they did not listen or read. The video was made to talk to people who have or who live in this area about the autopilot because I have no desire. I have paddled the autopilot. I have no desire to ever get stuck offshore or come to the surf in an autopilot. I actually know a guy who's like, I'm going to do it anyways. 
he went off for it twice. And then he sold that bad boy. Uh, hey, you do not, the account on the website, that program is not set up. Just say no. Just say no. It doesn't actually create anything. It does nothing. It was a wintertime project last year that I did not finish. And I might fix it this year when the wintertime comes. Clearly too busy during the summertime. Uh, so just say no. You do not have an account. Trust me, you don't have one because it doesn't generate it. It's a lie. Uh, I even turned it off. I don't even know why it's asking you. Port St. Lucie, nice. Looking for my first kite, 65 years old, 240, 240 pounds. Dude, you're new. Hey, we have a bunch of information out there on kayaks, okay? Uh, obviously, you have tides to consider. Currently, I've been fishing from the Hobie Lynx. I love it. You don't have anything to worry about weight or anything like that. That's not a concern, okay? Uh, I would watch those videos. Um, I would try to demo a kayak. If you have the ability locally to demo some kayaks, i try to spend some time in the kayak uh, before you purchase it, okay? Um, if you have any questions some specifically about kayaks, just shoot me an email at nick at navarrekayakfishing.com. I'm a little bit behind on emails, and I've got a bunch of emails during this thing, uh, but I will do my best to get back to everybody. If I don't get back to you, just email me again. I'm not going to think you're bugging me, but don't think I'm ignoring you either because I just sometimes I'm busy. Um, hey, happy Veterans Day, dude. Hey, anytime, Johnny. All right, so Tim, you have the paddle version. I want a rudder to slightly improve tracking. Yeah, so the 106 is tiny. It's hard to do. Um, I... I don't I'm not 100 percent positive how you would cost effectively put a rudder on the back of your 106. Uh, I know Old Town used to make a kit so you could do it. I don't know if they still do. And I know like Vibe and Wilderness Systems used to make a kit that you could retrofit to it. But uh a DIY version that flips up and flips down could be a bit challenging. Um if you have the power pole location on the back of your 106 paddle, I'm not really sure if you do, you could make some kind of bracket that you just slip a piece of aluminum down into, and then that way it would just give you, you know, a solid directional force, and you wouldn't have to worry about it turning. Um, that would be something to consider, Tim. Uh, I could draw you a picture if you want to see it sometime. I have an idea. Uh, don't know how to say it easily, though. Um, I would, if I were you, and the cost part's not that uh, big of a deal, depending on where your power pole setup is, I would just make a system that screws into those four holes, and then you can just slide it off and clip it in place, uh, and then be good to go. You can put a little spring on it, and then it would just gravity-fed pop up and uh, uh, go back down. I mean, there's so many options, right? You could really design anything. All right, Nick might as well have a follow up on the fish finder. Uh, you're not seeing a Garmin 73 SV on their site. Well, if they quit making that, EcoMap, EcoMap Plus, Garmin 73 SV, that's a CV. Oh, right there. 850 bucks. Cabela's will sell you one. No, oh, EcoMap 73 SV right here. Oh, it says discontinued. What month is it? That just means they're going to make you a new one. Um, let's see here. Oh, they're going to get you a new one. They might change the name, but that's still going to be along the lines, okay? Um, I'll see if I can find it. They're going to put out a new one. There's no way they get rid of that. We print the parts, man, and we use a bunch of different materials, uh, PLA, PETG, uh, TPU. It depends on the part, where it's being used, and how it's being used. Um, that is – see, you don't know what month it is either, Adam. That's what I'm talking about. I just don't even know what month it is. Um, we use like, material for 3D printing. No one makes material equally. You could buy one material from one company and it not even be close to the same material, okay? So you really got to 
experiment till you find the right stuff. There's no perfect answer. Well, I mean, there is, but it takes it takes time. Uh, oh, now I got to go find this. No, here's an Eco Map Plus. Oh, dang, it says discontinued right there, too. I can't believe we can't find this fish finder. Don't worry. I'll find it. It exists. There's one outside. I've had a few of them. Eco Map Ultra. Eco. Oh, because they call it Eco Map UHD series now, right? They tell you it's ultra high definition. 74, 72, 73 SV. Yeah, here it is right here, man. So that's right. So it's 650 bucks. I will hold on. Copy. Here's a link. You will have to navigate the their little menu thing. Uh, you can click a variety of different sizes. Personally, I'd go with the seven inch. I'd go with the. That's a CV though. Where's the SV? Oh my goodness. That's an SV right there. Okay, seven inch. Clear view. Ultra high, CV, SV, 72 SV, 74 SV, 73 SV. Yeah, they're there. Seven inch, I'd go with US Lakeview G3, and then Chirp Traditional Ultra High Definition UHD Side View and Clear View. That is a mouthful. That says without transducer, with transducer, it's looking like 850. And it comes with the GT56 now because it's the UHD. Uh, uh, ASA is a cool option, but uh, been there, uh, been there. Um, Ecomap UHD 73 SV. Uh, typically speaking, if you go look around the holidays, I'm pretty sure that Skyler bought that unit for $500 at Bass Pro during Black Friday. Let's see what this says. It looks like the eco maps are chart plotters versus fish finders at all strikers. Okay, so the difference between a chart plotter and a fish finder is this. If you buy something, say a seven SV or CV, it does not have a cartology program. The chart plotter, the cartology program, it allows you to see map details. If you buy a seven CV or SV, then you ever look at like a GPS that has like a just a brown color? It looks like it looks like this, right? It looks like this in the background. It will not show you the waterway if it doesn't have a second number. So if you just get like a seven, and you get a striker. It does not have a cartology program, and then you can. You use Active Captain to have like an overlay, and wherever you pedal, it'll show you the water. But you can't just go to a random place and it show you there's a creek over there or show you there's a cut to get back. Uh, very interesting, okay? Um, just consider that. I know that the chart plotter costs more than the fish finder, but the chart plotter has the actual ability to show you waterways, uh, which may not seem like a big deal at just first glance, but I bought a 7SV, did a video on it saying, is it, I won't say cheap, uh, a, a more affordable option compared to buying the 73 or 74. And it was one of those things where you can't see stuff, right? You just can't see stuff. And it's uh, super annoying. Okay, it doesn't help. If you can't see what's going on, it does not help you. Uh, just consider that, okay? Um, chart plotter is important. Fish finder still does a good job, but you're not going to have a mapping program, uh, which when you go offshore and stuff like that or big lake, 
or even go to Louisiana, then you can't tell where a single creek is and you have no way of telling a GPS to get back. That is why chart plotter is important. Uh, what other questions do we have? Pablo, I do not have a video setting up a Garmin fish finder. Truthfully, you don't really got to do that much, and that's why it dominates a lot of the competition, in my opinion. Uh, well, we will, uh, I guess we'll wrap this up, okay? Um, lots of sales on the website. If you guys have questions, uh, just let me know. Um, we will do a video, just an actual video where I talk about this stuff probably tomorrow or something. Uh, so everyone else can see it. I wanted you guys to have first dibs. If you watch the live video, I'm not going to post this. We're going to delete it. It'll be gone. Okay. Uh, questions, shoot me an email, uh, all that good stuff. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and, uh, purchase all the stuff makes all this stuff possible. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching.